Okay, guys, this is me and my Rise of Skywalker spoiler review. So if you haven't seen the movie, you don't care about spoilers. <clears throat> Go watch the film and then you can come back and see my review. And so while I get where people are coming from, from the negative side, where they have their issues with it, for me, I don't really have them that much issues. I thought it was a good finale to the Skywalker saga. I know, you know, I think at towards the Towards the beginning, some of the reveals, it was obvious that um, JJ was trying to fill the gaps between some of the questions not answered in the in the um, Last Jedi and some just trying to regain the trust of you know the Star Wars fans in general and and kind of stop you know the Star Wars fandom to be even more toxic, especially with like the whole idea that Snoke that um, Palpatine cloned Snoke and just the ultimately ending up that Rey is a Palpatine, which I thought that reveal felt fine. And I guess that's in one way or another made up for her kind of being a Mary Sue, but not really. Um, But not really. Uh, And I think ultimately, I thought the the movie was really um, good. I thought it was... Definitely, honestly, for me, the best Disney Star Wars film. You know, obviously not not at all on the level of, uh, you know, the original trilogy, but still on a level that I could respect it, on a level that I thought was exciting. And it was a very actually fast paced movie. There wasn't that many times where you could pause and jump in from planet to planet. And I, and I also like the idea that the the whole group was together. You know, I think that was another large part. And then the, the cameos kept on coming, you know. We obviously knew that Lando was coming in, and he actually had a smaller role than maybe I thought he was. But when he was in there, when he was there, it was really cool. And, and how they handled Leia really good. You could really well consider how they used, reused footage of the Force Awakens. Obviously, there was times, there were a few scenes where, like, it was obvious that that happened in the Force Awakens. But, it, but that was still fun. I like the whole concept of you could use the force your force powers and abilities inside of you to heal or save someone else but that saps out your energy and so i felt like it was really nice how leia used her 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 energy to save ben and i like how you know kylo ren saved ray and that ultimately caused in him to die i thought that was nice and especially his ending with just one subtle Raylo kiss at the end was really nice and i actually thought i, I get where people have the criticism of palpatine as well but for me i thought it worked it worked in a sense that it bridged all the trilogies together for one nice spam bang of a, of um of a finale with um Ray doing like the the dual lightsabers was really cool and the trick he did she did with the with the lightsaber to give it to Kylo Ren or in this case Ben and I like the I like that whole sense I like the redemption of um Kylo Ren and I really of course loved when Han Solo Harrison Ford did make a cameo again that was really nice I I thought like is him Luke and Leia where I feel like handled really well in this film, considering all three of them are dead. Technically, one's dead for reals, and then two are dead in the films. Obviously, Luke came back as a force ghost, and, well, Han came back as a ghost ghost. So I thought that was really, you know, exciting. And and I also liked how Luke was handled. He wasn't, like, a big part of it, but when he was there, it kind of made for a nice, cool scene. And I liked the ending a lot. Tatooine, it. yeah, it was nostalgia based, but that's what you kind of. If it's you're gonna end something, you gotta have something to p- put it full circle. And I think that was really ending up looking at the twin sons was a really nice touch. And seeing Leia and Luke's force ghost at the end, it, it really brought me full circle from watching Luke stare at the twin sons now Ray, and I felt. That was really nice, and, you know, and I think her adopting the name Skywalker, I guess, um, was really an interesting idea, I guess, and I thought that was mainly because I feel like it mainly hinted that 
yes, she had no family, but the Skywalkers were kind of ultimately going to be her family. Maybe that was in honor of Leia. Maybe that was in honor of the fact that she actually, that she likes Ben Solo, who is technically one way or another somewhat of a Skywalker. So maybe she's saying, you know, that. But, you know, actually, and I also liked Kylo Ren and Rey's duel. And I think, uh, as you see by basically this rule, review, it seems like the best part about this film, and honestly that's true, is the Kylo Ren and Rey relationship in this film is really nice how they both, Rey tries to get away from Kylo Ren, but as you see, as they jump from planet to planet, they actually go closer to each other. Rey leaves kind of Poe and Finn, through like a bunch of times you know first in the desert planet then in the when they get on the um star star cruiser then when they then when they go on to um uh 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 the um andor to get to the Death Star, so it was kind of interesting, and I, I, again, I really liked the duel, and I, I, I had a feeling that the Dark Ray was going to be a vision, but they had a quick little three-second duel-ish thing, and it's fine, you know, I, I didn't mean that much, you know, but I guess it kind of felt predictable, well, not predictable, but where the, it kind of, they already, they heavily hinted at Ray being in Palpatine before they actually came clean and said it, so you kind of, kind of understand, like, that's where they're going to ever since the Force goes, and they got me good with Chewie, because if Chewie was going to die, I would be like, ah, I would be bonkers, but I think as far as the new characters, they don't really have much to do, and neither did Rose, which is, I don't know, you know, I guess I would like... Some of the, for the new characters have much more to do, especially Zuri Bliss. She didn't really have that much to do. And and I like the fact that they had a straightforward narrative in this film, as per as opposed to Finn's doing one thing, Rose and Finn are doing it, or Poe's doing one thing, Finn and Rose are doing something different, and Ray's doing something different. And I didn't really mind I didn't care for that. And it honestly took in many ways I feel like took me out of the Rise of is not or not Rise of Skywalker, sorry, Last Jedi. But in this film, they're they're all together, and that was really nice to see because they're ultimately going on a mission with a straightforward narrative. And I really love the camaraderie between Poe and Finn in this film. It was really, you know, I think a nice addition to the film. And I thought, I again, I really, it really felt good, and it felt like Star Wars to see all your main characters together on the Millennium Falcon. Doing a certain mission, doing it, um, going for a straightforward mission that's not that complicated, but can have twists and turns and in between. I think that's really the charm of it, of Star Wars, and that's honestly what made New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and and uh, Return of Jedi so good is because you get to understand this group of characters together throughout all three films, and they're never, they're not, they're rarely apart. There's a, they're apart for some moments of it. But rare, rare, but not that on rare occasions. One or two times a film, like Luke was away to train, but other than that, the main group, the main cast was together. And then New Hope, there was they were pretty much all together. Empire Strikes Back, they were pretty much all together. The only difference was Luke went out to do his own mission, train. And then it turns out, again, they were all together. And yeah, did Luke left for to fight? Darth Vader and Palpatine, but that's fine, because you get the still main cast together for, again, a large part, and still, I can mind one person going off and doing their own thing, especially when it's like a Luke Skywalker Jedi-type character, and that's fine. Same, same thing here, I was fine with the Rey going off and doing her own thing, because, again, the other cast were so strong, and they, they felt re- really good, and it wasn't like there were two different plot lines, so they all had the same objective of stopping Palpatine, stopping Darth Vader, and... Richard Jedi here again, stopping puppet. And so I really liked it that ultimately they all had the same mission, they all had the same jobs, they all had the same objective, they all were together. And I thought that was really nice. And now the final battle was cool, and there was a lot of cool cameos. And again, it was it was really um, a nice way to close it. Obviously, ideally it could have been better. Obviously, but again, you can't you can't redo something. I think. Mean, they did the best with what they got. I think that's what ultimately did. Is Jada did the best with kind of the missteps that happened 
in the first two films, he could only do so much, and that's and I think he gave the best film that he could have given. And of course, again, I thought the finale, what you're talking about, on the planet itself, on the snowy planet itself, or in space, was really nicely done. I thought, again, it's not the craziest, best Star Wars film, but was it a good Star Wars show? Yeah, I'd say so. Again, I could see where some people who have issues with this film, I could see where they're coming from, but I don't think I have really issues. And maybe that's because I set the bar pretty low considering after I saw the negative reviews. But no, I think that's not really it. I just thought it was a nice film. And especially, you know, the callbacks to the other films in this trilogy and just in general. Because it closed these characters really nicely. Really good. But just closed the whole saga really good. Uh, not really good, but the best they, they could have done with all the stuff. So then, I also like this whole scene with Rhett, Luke, er, uh, with um Luke and Leia training. That little flashback, DJ, DJ, CGI right. part, very much. So I think overall, and so I think uh, another thing I really like is Luke lifting the X way X um wing out of the sky or not out of the sky out of the swamp um lake uh ocean from on on uh octu is it that was the planet calls i think that was i think that was a different thing but on his exile planet that was real cool of course that was obviously a nod back to uh, Empire Strikes Back when he couldn't do it and Yoda had to do it. But I also like the whole idea, and Rise of Skywalker feels, honestly, at the ultimate end of the day, like a good title, because the Rise part is, you know, Rey rising when at to fight Palpatine when, at the very end, when um, you hear all the Jedi's rise, and you hear Anakin's voice, and Mace Windu's voice, Yoda's voice. I think Leia might have been in there, Obi-Wan was there, I think most likely Luke was there, Darth, uh, not Darth Vader was there, but actually he did have a voice at the beginning with Kylo Ren with him. And I do like the very dark themes and in, in, um, found in dark locations in this film. I thought that was really cool to kind of evoke the darkness that Rey was feeling inside. And of course, I loved when she was kind of scavenging around uh, the Death Star Serves, easy a lot. I'm si- actually sick of not going to school today, so my, my winter break has just started. But yeah, um, uh, so I liked all that. And so I think, again, I like the cast. Poe and Finn have a great relationship. And then new characters I liked, but again, they didn't have that much to do. And then Lando, again, I liked him. And I liked seeing him like Falcon and Chewie and whatnot, but they didn't have a lot to do. Again, I mean, they did have a lot. Uh, Chewie, had, I'm not, not talking about Chewie. And actually, C- C-3PO had a good arc, but Chewie and C-3PO were fine. But it was mainly Lando that I'm surprised that he didn't have much to do. Because he had, like, a little scene on the desert planet. But then didn't really come in until, like, the last 15 minutes of the movie in that Millennium Falcon. And then he just goes away. He, he, you don't, you, you're, mainly, you're mainly seeing the X-Ways of the battle, which is fine. So, I don't really care. It, it, it's not like the Millennium Falcon didn't have anyone to think to do it's not like they didn't use their life like, oh, it's honestly it's weird to say but only honestly i feel like the millennium falcon has its own kind of art which is weird to say considering it's a ship but no uh uh but no, also i uh really liked uh all the subtle touches in the film and all the um exciting parts and again like i said i, I will do a ranking right after this, in a different video, so stay tuned for that ranking, again, like I said, my vacation is on, so I'm probably going to post a lot during winter break, so you can be sure to see a lot more videos coming, maybe, probably, so yeah, if you want to know what I really think about it, ultimately, it's a good conclusion to the Skywalker Saga, good conclusion to this trilogy, a satisfying endings to a bunch of different plot lines, a bunch of different characters, and I thought, and I thought it was... Um, good, the best film that J.J. Abrams and Lucasfilm could have done with some of the missteps that, and some of the missteps in the past with, you know, some stuff that happened at Last Jedi and Force Awakens and director's issues and whatnot. And so I think they ultimately made the best film that they could make to end the Skywalker Saga and end 
end end this trilogy one way or another. And I think it worked for me. I think the characters, the, the fast paced move, movements, the fast paced action, the story, the idea of Palpatine come back, the idea that all these different things come together to a, to make a film that I thought was actually pretty good. Stay tuned for videos coming at you.